Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss generally accepted auditing standard known as GAS. Now GAS sounds a little bit familiar to, to another term we learned before in accounting called GAAP, G-A-A-P. Remember, G-A-A-P is for accounting, generally accepted accounting principles, A for accounting. Here we're dealing with auditing. Now for GAAP, who sets GAAP? FASB. FASB sets GAAP. For GAS, we have the Accounting Standard Board introduces the principal underlining an audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards or simply known are the standards. And they did this part of the, the part of their codification of the auditing standards. Now, bear in mind, these principles are not mandatory. In other words, they are not mandatory. However, they are used as a framework for auditors. Think of this framework as the GAP framework. And if you remember the GAP framework, it's right here in front of you on the screen. We have the various level. Level one, where it's the purpose of accounting. It defines the purpose of accounting, its objective. Then we have the second level, where we discuss the elements of the financial statements, the qualitative characteristic. Then the third level, we have assumptions, principles, and constraints. This is the framework for GAP. Well, we have a framework for auditing generally accepted auditing principles, or simply put, are the principles. The principles guide the auditor, just like GAP guide how we set the rules for accounting. These principles guide auditors. And in this session, we're going to dive into an overview. Notice dive, but also an overview. Overview means we're going to just touch upon each topic very briefly. Why? Because each of these topics that we're going to be discussing today will have two, three, four lectures. Each topic will have several lectures most likely. So that's why it's an overview of GAS. GAS itself is one, one whole auditing course. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with GAS, the structure is organized under the following principles. I'm going to show you the big picture, the roadmap that we're going to go over today. Purpose of an audit. Just like there's a purpose for financial accounting, there's a purpose for an audit. It's called also the term that they use is the purpose. Management responsibilities. Here we're looking at management responsibilities. What is management responsible for? Personal responsibility of the auditors, known as responsibilities. And under personal responsibilities of the auditor, we will briefly discuss competence, competencies and capabilities, ethical standards, specifically independence, professional skepticism and judgment. Then we'll look at auditor's action in performing the audit. Here's the auditor when it comes to performing the audit. The auditor will have to plan and supervise the audit properly, set and apply materiality level, assess the material risk of misstatement and gather sufficient appropriate evidence. And they do all of this for the last component of the structure. And that is to report, which is called reporting, to issue a report. So this is gas. But again, each each topic here will, will take one or two lectures later on and some more than two and some maybe one lectures. But the point is this is an audit course by itself. This slide summarizes an audit course. Starting with the purpose of an audit, what's the purpose of an audit? Is to provide a reasonable assurance. Remember, that term will appear again and again with us in the, audit, in the auditing course. Reasonable assurance, not absolute assurance, that the financial statements are free from material or significant statement, whether due to error or fraud, allowing the auditor to confirm their fair presentation in line with the rele relevant framework in line in the U.S. with GAAP GAAP. Why do we do so? Why do we perform an audit? Well, to make sure it's in reliance. Why? Because it's going to increase the conf confidence in the presented information. That's the purpose of an audit. It gives more confidence in the financial statement. Then at the end of the audit, we're going to report on the financial statement based on, the, on their finding mandated by GAS. So we, at the end, we will issue a report. So that's the purpose of an audit. What is the management responsibilities when it comes to an audit? We have to know management responsibilities. Management is responsible for, bear in mind, the preparation of financial statement 
and related notes and disclosure, and establishing and maintaining internal control and ensuring a robust internal control against misstatements. Simply put, management is responsible for the financial statements. Management is responsible for internal control. The auditor is, is issuing an opinion about those. Management is responsible for the financial statements and related notes and disclosure. What is the auditor responsibilities? Well, they have to be competent and capable. Well, how do we define competent and capable? Well, the auditor must possess the necessary competence and skills to perform an audit. What does that mean? It means they have to have formal auditing and, and accounting education. They have to have relevant practical experience, and that's the most important. And they have to un undergo ongoing professional training, make sure they are trained, they're getting their continuous professional education to stay up to date. Now, bear in mind that some legal precedents emphasize that auditors should be proficient, especially in their client industry. So in some cases, if the audit auditor takes on a case and they're not competent and they are sued, well, they're going to say, well, you are not proficient. You should not have been taking that assignment in the first place. So if a, CP if a CPA or their team lacks the qualification, their professional obligation to either acquire the needed expertise or hire someone to help you or refuse the assignment. Make sure you are competent and capable of performing the audit. Also, you have to comply with relevant ethical standard, with all the relevant ethical standard. The AICPA Code of Professional Conduct define ethical guidelines for CPAs and accounting firms and managerial roles, and you have to follow those, especially as an auditor emphasizing audit independence. And we're going to have one or two recording explaining what independence is. The code necessitate CPA firms to adopt, to adopt practices, ensuring personal ind independence. And we're going to look at these practices and the quality controls later on. This includes set, pro set, set protocols for major audits in case of management auditor disagreement and the method to safeguard auditor's independence and how to adhere to ethical standards. Again, we're going to have a whole session about independence. Also, the auditor should exercise professional skepticism and professional judgment. What is that? Well, auditor must consistently exercise those during an audit. Basically, it's having a questioning attitude, questioning everything. It means being vigilant for signs of potential misstatement from fraud or errors and critically evaluating the evidence. Have a questioning mind. Everything you look at, say, does this make sense? Does it fit in the whole picture? Does it make sense giving the industry, giving the company and its environment? In essence, and we'll have a whole session about professional judgment. I, I know I keep saying this, but I told you this at the beginning. In essence, an auditor should be on guard for material discrepancies, whether from deception or mistakes throughout the audit. That's why you want to have a questioning mind, because you're looking for things that doesn't make any sense, that there is a discrepancy, especially if it's a material one. So when assessing potential misstatement, an auditor must apply their training, knowledge, and most importantly, most importantly, the experience to make informed decision in the audit context. They are obliged to perform the roles with due diligence and care. Also, the auditor will have to plan the audit appropriately. We're going to have a few sessions about this. The auditor has the duty to plan an audit, ensuring a thoroughness and the appropriate guidance to junior team members. Proper supervision is crucial because the auditor is responsible for the people that they are supervising in the auditing process since much of the work carried out by less seasoned staff. So the people that do the work are the staff. Usually the senior and the manager would review the work. This oversight ensures that even tasks performed by newer staff meet high standard required by the audit. Also, the auditor will have to set materiality. What is materiality? The auditor's role is to determine if the financial statement have significant Inaccuracy. What is significant? Well, significant means it's above a certain level, and that level is materiality. Now, what's that level? That's a professional judgment. Is 10,000 that level? Is 50,000 that level? Is 1 million that level? Well, each audit is different. Each client is different. We'll talk about materiality later on. But they set, they must set and apply suitable materiality threshold during an audit. So what is a materiality? Well, if a misstatement is deemed significant, if a misstatement is significant, when is it significant? When is it material? It would influence the decision of a rational user of the financial statement. Simply put, the general definition of materiality, it, if influences someone's decision about the company, it's material. 
Now remember, we have many users. How do we define materiality? Later on, we'll talk about that a little bit more in details when we talk about materiality. But the definition is, if it influences someone's decision, it's material. Also, the auditor will have to assess the risk of material misstatement. Now we're talking about performance here. For a thorough audit, the auditor evaluate risks of significant inaccuracies in the financial statement ahead of time and tailors audit procedures accordingly. So what we do as an auditor, we assess the risk. We'll try to see which areas would require more work because they are more susceptible to errors and fraud. Here's what would require a deep understanding of the client business industry, enabling the auditor to pinpoint major business risks affecting the statements. For example, auditing a bank requires knowledge of its operation, relevant regulation, and potential risk like loan loss reserves. So you have to know a little bit more about the client and the industry in order to be able to assess the risk. And this goes back to your education, to your experience, and to your skills. So the cornerstone of the auditing is the significance of the client internal control system. Yeah, you, you might be relying on those. It's vital for reducing business risks, safeguarding asset, and ensuring accurate financial data. That's why we also have to understand their internal control. So if the client has a robust internal control, good internal control, the auditor might have to collect less evidence, do less substantive testing. On the other hand, weak controls would, 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 would have to do what? We have to collect more evidence or sometimes make the audit impossible means get out, don't audit the client. The auditor will also have to collect sufficient appropriate evidence. The auditor will have to gather adequate and relevant audit evidence. Now, sufficient and appropriate means good enough to be able to make a decision whether a significant misstatement exists. But we're going to discuss this topic much more in details. And the auditor will tailor their approach based on, based on the assessed risk of that client. Also, depending on the quantity and the kind of evidence needed for a specific situation, this is where the auditor uses their professional discretion to what type of evidence do we need. And at the end, we have to issue a report. Reporting The reporting principles state that auditors must express an opinion in written form on the fairness of the financial statement according to the relevant framework. For example, reporting, we're going to have 10 to 12 recording because we have so many different type of reports. This opinion stems from the audit evidence and the finding that we did earlier, if no opinion given, the report should also clearly indicate that. And that's one opinion is no opinion given. So also we need to know what would what would the report would look like if no opinion is given. Let's take a look at a multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures to help us understand what we just learned or consolidate what we just learned. And this is what you find on Farhat Lectures, additional MCQs like this one. All the following are among the auditor's responsibility under the principles underlying financial statement audit except. So we have four options. Three is a yes and one is a no. The auditor don't have to do that under the responsibilities. Let's start from the bottom D. Adhering to relevant ethical requirements. Do they have to do that? Absolutely yes. To all ethical relevant requirements? Yes. So that's a yes. The answer is not this. Having the appropriate competency and capabilities. Do we have to have that? Absolutely, yes. They have to have that. Maintaining professional skepticism and exercising professional judgment. Constantly, throughout the audit, we have to do that. By process of elimination, A is the correct answer, which is incorrect. Planning the audit to ensure all misstatement will be detected. And what made this, this statement incorrect is the word all. We cannot make sure all misstatements are detected. We only provide reasonable assurance, not absolute assurance. We cannot, we cannot provide absolute assurance. We cannot detect all misstatements. So I strongly suggest you go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs through false questions. That's going to help you understand this concept. Whether you are a CPA exam candidate or an accounting student, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.